Well, welcome everybody. I'm Peter Murray and I'm here this afternoon with Alan Shingler, who's chairman of Architects Shepherd Robson. And I brought along a book actually here, uh, Shepherd Robson Architect, which was published in 1984 and which I wrote a section of that book. And it's interesting to think that there have been uh, three pretty bad recessions that we've had to deal with in that period and the practice is still going strong. So that's a, an op optimistic view of, of, of how we deal with uh, crises and so hopefully we will uh, come out of this current one uh, in a similar fashion. So perhaps I can just ask you first Alan, we've been in lockdown now for nearly three weeks and uh, just wondering how it's going at Shepherd Robson. Well it's going it's going okay Peter, it's going well I think all things considered. I think we've been through different stages of emotion over the last three week period. I mean I personally as well as others Others, I'm sure, have been worried about the storm that's ahead of us, the unknown, and how long that storm is going to last for. And been worried about our friends, our families, and our colleagues' health, but also worried about the health of Shepherd Robson. Um, as you mentioned at your introduction, it's a practice that was established in 1938 and is now in its fifth generation of owners. Um, and we're probably facing one of the biggest challenges that the practice has ever had to face since it was established just pre-war, pre-Second World War. Um, but the worry is only worth energy um, if you can translate that into action. And so what we've really been doing over the next, over the last uh, three weeks is looking at how we can implement remote working successfully across all three offices, which closed a fortnight ago. We have 380 people all successfully working remotely using the new technology and it's incredibly this it's incredible the speed of change that people can adapt to a new way of working um, we as a business strive on interaction and sharing of creative ideas to come up with design solutions and we're finding this platform um, a good way, an alternative way to have a daily interaction with people and still able to communicate and, and produce the work that we need to do. Um, it does have practical challenges, practical challenges in IT and setting up your normal reporting meetings and our technical reviews and our design reviews, but all of which now are, are underway and are on a stable platform. Um, I've been amazed by the agility and dexterity of the team. It's a positive that's come out of this process and proud to work with such an incredible group of individuals, which the Shepherd Robson family kind of culturally um, grows through those generations. So now we need to focus on the new norm. We need to focus on the future of Shepherd Robson and uh, set our sails to service the work that we're currently doing and undertaking for our clients, but also come out and uh, bounce back as hopefully the economy bounces back quickly um, as we come out of this pandemic. Thanks. Um, but as a practice, of course, you have a wide range of work, education, master planning, housing to offices. I mean, how, how do you see the impact of COVID-19 on sort of different types of workload? Uh, the practice has been very successful at diversifying our work across different um, public, private sector and different clients and also three different locations as offices. But I'm afraid that we're not immune to, to this. The COVID-19 is, is affecting all parts of industry and I don't think public and private sector, at least the, the work that we're involved in, um, is, is reacting any differently. Um, on a positive note, meetings are continuing, client meetings, planning meetings with local authorities, uh, quality review panels, uh, we've also had a number of interviews for new projects over the last three weeks and our work that's just pre-planning work but also the work that's in our IBA stage three and four is continuing um, so that's all very positive. Uh, site work is inevitably impacted um, so we're seeing some delays on the work that's moving to site or on site and also the feasibility work that we do for clients to aid them in new acquisitions is being put on hold. So inevitably we'll, we'll see some turn down um, or slow down in work as we go through this period of, of remote working. But like most businesses, I'm sure we have the momentum of work to carry us through um, to, 
when we all get back to normal. And of course, there are, I might say, normal things still impacting on how we work. And uh, we understand the uh, Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government is going to go ahead with changes to the planning system, which they were uh, had produced the white paper for before the COVID uh, virus uh, outbreak really impacted on what we're doing. Uh, what do you think about that and what impact that might have on your practice? Well, I think I think that one of the things that COVID-19 shows us is, is the speed of change that can actually happen um, and we could change the status quo. And I'd like to see significant and quick change in the planning system. I'd like us to accelerate the um, smart city infrastructure planning um, to enable better remote working, more efficient remote working, less travel, to accelerate the digitized planning system. Um, and to look at ways of improving consultation and feedback through that process. So in many ways, we need to take lessons from this process and see how that can feed back into day-to-day -day life as we move back to some normality. Um, but I'd also like to see some greater transparency. Um, there's often a conflict between the views of local authorities in the planning system compared to strategic policy and guidance through the GLA or government, and occasionally becomes um, over bureaucratic and there's a lack of transparency. So hopefully we can try and find a way to simplify that process. And the, one th the other thing I would like to, um, to change, which I'm uncomfortable with, Peter, is, is um, government's plans to broaden permitted development. So broadening uh, the enabling developers to demolish commercial office buildings or vacant buildings without planning permission to convert into housing. Whereas whilst we have a need for providing new homes, we also have a need to retain our existing stock to lower the embodied energy and the carbon emissions through construction. So there seems to be a little bit of counterproductive policy there that uh, fights against uh, the industry's um, battle against climate change and reducing carbon emissions. Thanks. And one of the other things which uh, continues to impact on the profession, of course, the uh, Grenfell inquiry and also the Hackett report and the impact that will have on building regulations. How do you see the profession responding to uh, those issues? It's been it's been a very difficult period um, since the fire at Grenfell, and um, I'm very pleased to see that the the RIBA plan of work for 2020 come out and that will assist the profession enormously because we, we desperately need to increase our knowledge base and awareness in fire safety issues. Um, at Shepherd Robson we anticipated this um, after, shortly after the fire and over the last two years we've increased our technical um, experience and support centrally to advise architects, help architects within teams. And we've also changed our review process. We, have, we now have quality review processes at the beginning as well as at the end of each RIBA stage. So it becomes a part of day-to-day -day life and it's a very important aspect of um, the architect's role now. And I think even more important to form strategic links with specialist fire consultants or improved inspectors to help us through some still some ambiguous points in building regulations in part B 2019 um, so that we can still get inertia and momentum through design and advising clients. But I think the other, the other thing that it would be amiss of me not to mention is, is uh, a real problem that the industry has at the moment around professional indemnity insurance in, in the wake of Grenfell Fire and the Hackett Report. Um, premiums are significantly increasing for architects. Um, and soon it may be impossible to get um, professional indemnity insurance for parts of the building envelope. We're also seeing um, consultants, specialist consultants, not able to acquire insurance levels to the same level that an architect is contractually um, required to provide. So there's a real risk that there will be a gap um, in professional indemnity insurance and parts of the building could become uninsurable and, and I'm not really sure what the, what the answer to that is but we do need to face that as, we, as we're coming out of this environment 
with COVID-19. Yeah, it's very worrying. Um, but uh, one of the other, I might say, positive effects of COVID-19 in the last couple of weeks in massive uh, reduction in CO2 emissions, urban pollution. Uh, do you think this is going to be something that we will uh, try and create a sort of lasting impact? Or do you think once it's over, we just go back to doing the same old things again? Um, well, like, like you, I've been uh, been reading some positive news about carbon emissions dropping. And I read something yesterday about China's emissions fell by 25% while people were asked to stay at home. Um, but I suspect in answer to your question that this, um, this drop in carbon emissions will be short lived. If, um, if the economy does back bounce back, then so will our carbon emissions. Carbon emissions are relate directly proportionate to uh, the economy. Uh, we saw this in 2008. Um, and there is a risk also that um, there'll be some loss of inertia. Um, I think there was a real sort of swell of uh, feeling uh, around sustainability and climate change and a public interest as well as a construction industry interest in trying to reduce carbon emissions and do our part to to reverse the impacts of climate change or to slow climate change down and i'm concerned that actually covid19 could could um slow our um, accelerated change for to reduce carbon emissions as people focus on more immediate concerns around public health but ultimately what we need to do is we need to change our behavior and, and maybe what we're doing at the moment is helping us adapt and understand that you can change quickly. Uh, we will be able to consume less and we will be able to push forward in decarbonating our grid. So of all the, might say, positive things which might come at, out of uh, COVID-19, which is the one that you would think was most important? I think the most important thing is, is um, I think it will change working patterns, which I think will have an impact on, on, on carbon emissions and also lifestyle in terms of rebalancing work lifestyle, not to the detriment of uh, the economy, I believe, because we'll demonstrate that it, it will be a positive thing. Uh, but I think where I, th I hope there will be uh, a difference is that we're learning to care for our community care for those that are around us, care for one another. And from this, hopefully we'll remember how fragile life is and what we value being people, friends, and also our climate. Alan Chingliff, thank you very much indeed for your comments and stay well.